an agronomy update brought to you by Technology Crops. Hi, I'm Luke Spainauer. I'm with Technology Crops and I wanted to give you a crop update from the field. We're out here in early January 2014 and as you've probably been driving the past your crop, you're still seeing some green but also start seeing some purple throughout your crop. This is natural. What this crop is doing at this stage is moving into the dormancy stage. This crop needs to do this. It needs to have proper time to fertilize so it can make seed for you in the spring. What this plant is doing, as you can see here on these older leaves, is pulling out the nutrients out of here, bringing it into the center of the plant, in the crown of the plant, storing up the energy, storing up the carbohydrates. So then when it does break dormancy, its regrowth is going to start. As long as your crown of your plant is still nice and green here, your crop's going to be fine. So don't be concerned about that. Uh, this crop right here will eventually, in a couple weeks, be all purple. Next, I want to talk about grass control. As we've been driving around the state in late December, early January, we have seen some fields with uh, heavy ryegrass pressure. Um, wanted to talk to you about when to do an application um, so you can get your best control. Um, as you know right now, conditions are unfavorable to do that. It's very cold right now. Um, I like to wait until you get several days of 50 plus degree temperatures. Let's say in the mid 50s, you want that grass to be actively growing. Um, also, this time of the year, I would use the full recommended label rate and also use a surfactant if called for. Um, on timing of that, timing of the day, I would do that in the warmest part of the day. It's going to give you the best control. Next, I want to touch base on fertilization. Uh, I want to touch on three elements. Uh, first, nitrogen. I want to talk about uh, when to do a split application, the timing, the rates, and also some of our trials that we've had last year. Uh, first, when to consider doing a split application on your crop. Um, crops this year that I would consider doing one on is um, crops that were planted a little later uh, that's not quite at the stage we'd like to see them at right now. Um, then also crops that's on sandier soils, lighter soils where leaching is possible. Uh, we saw a great benefit to doing a split application last season with that so I would recommend it this year. And then moving on to nitrogen rates. Uh, for a split application um, let's just take you're going to put 100 pounds on total for in the spring. Um, I don't like to go out there and put 50% on for your first application and then 50% on for your second application. I like to split that up to about a 30 to 40% of it on your first application and then use the additional right before stem extension. Okay, the timing to do a split application, I like to put the first dose on the 1st of February to mid-February. Then I want to come back with the additional nitrogen at the end of February or the 1st of March. You want to get that nitrogen on right before stem extension. Uh, as far as your rates, uh, for average pound crop, the uptake is around 150 pounds. Uh, but if you really want to push the yield, I do recommend putting a little more there. Um, nitrogen, this crop responds very well to it. Um, so most of the time it does pay you back. On some of our trials, last year we increased the rates by 30 pounds and growers saw a net revenue return of $25 per acre. Next I want to touch base on sulfur. Um, Rapeseed requires about twice as much sulfur than wheat does. Um, it's got a lot of sulfur compounds in there. It's needed for the protein and also it helps nitrogen be more efficient in the plant. Um, generally for average pound crop we say 30 pounds is required but if you want to push the yield I would go up to maybe 35 to 40 pounds of sulfur. Um, I would not use elemental sulfur because for plants to uptake it, it needs to be in the sulfate form and it's not going to have time to transition to that. So many guys will use ammonium sulfate. That's a good way to get some nitrogen and also some sulfur. Lastly, I want to touch on boron. This is a very uh, important element in this rapeseed crop. Um, generally, we recommend around a half a pound in the springtime. Um, what boron is used in this crop is for proper pollination, flower retention, uh, number of pods it sets. So it's very important here to your yield. Um, so we want to make sure we have that uh, element in there in the right, right amount. Since sulfur and boron are mobile in the soil and 
we've had some excessive rainfall this year um, so it may have moved out of the root zone so you may want to take a uh, soil test to see what's actually there so we can get that uh, amount right for your spring fertilization. If you do have a recent soil test we'll be glad to give you a recommendation off of that. Lastly I want to touch on driving over your crop. Uh, we've had many questions about well will this affect my yield and the answer to that is no. Um, what happens here as you drive over your crop you may stunt some of them plants but the outer rows they will compensate and fill in so you don't lose any yield. One recommendation that I would give as you'll be driving over this crop a couple times between now and harvest would be use the same tracks so you're only damaging those plants each time so you won't lose any yield. And to close, lastly, uh, if you do have any questions or would like for us to come out and look at your crop with you, um, feel free to contact myself and also contact your grower relations manager, Stephen Fletcher or Jeff Riddle. Looking forward to seeing you back out in the field soon.